So welcome to The Brain from Knowing to Doing. Um, today's video podcast is on why I use Questy.ai. And I have the founder today, David Sifri, and this is part of the series on your brain on AI. So David is a remarkable serial entrepreneur. He, he graduated from John Hopkins University, computer science in 1991. I'm just reading a small amount of the ridiculous number of things that he's done. In 1998, he co-founded Linux Care, the world's largest open source services company. 2004, founded Technorati, the world's leading web blog search engine. 2007, named Technology Pioneer by none other than the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. It go, honestly, it goes on and on. He helps multiple companies and um, sort of empower with AI and build stuff like you just wouldn't believe. I came across um, David through a m remarkable community called um, Next Collabs. I heard about his product, started to use it, and it's been kind of groundbreaking for me. So let's go through it, David. Wow. Well, first of all, Evia, it, it is such an enormous pleasure uh, and an honor to be able to join you here today. And um, uh, thank you for all of those incredibly kind words uh, about uh, about Questy and, uh, and and it's been such a pleasure getting to know you as well as uh, as a regular user and and just with all of the work that you do, the research that you've done, ground, groundbreaking stuff. David, you know, of course, we are all aware of the extremely possible downsides of AI, of information distortion in particular, and it is frightening, actually. But, but I have to say that Questy was my first foray into using a search engine that gave me hope that we could get better quality information. So the converse of information distortion is what why I wanted to speak to you today about Questy.ai because it is it is a a sort of symbol for me about how one person was able to develop something that is so constructive in its intent, which is about quality information. That's just my Personal philosophy, that being said, David, what is Questy and how does it work? Mm. So uh, I, I've heard people refer to it in a bunch of different ways. And by the way, please go, and for all of the folks who are listening or watching, um, go to Questy.ai. It's just like it sounds like it, it spells like it sounds, Q-U-E-S-T-Y dot A-I. And when you go there, um, you can sign in with just an email address and um, you'll get 30 free research queries. Um, and you can test it out and play with it to your heart's delight. Um, but really at its heart, some people call it an internet research assistant. Uh, other, I've heard other people call it an answers engine, right? As opposed to a search engine, right? Because what it really does is... Um, it operates kind of like a smart but naive virtual assistant. So, so let me explain how that how that works. And um, you know, I'd love to hear basically also how you think about this, Evian, and, and you're a user, right? But but the idea here is that if you want to know anything, right? Imagine that you had a smart research assistant, but who is naive about the world. You could say, well. Hey, I want to know, you know, tell me about who is Dr. Evian Gordon? Well, what would what would that assistant do, right? They say, well, I've never heard of this person before. They'd probably go to a search engine, right? They'd go to a Google or a Bing or, you know, DuckDuckGo or what have you. And they would type in, you know, who is Evian Gordon, right? Or tell me about Evian Gordon. And those search engines would go out using their algorithms and give you a big list of blue links. Now, if you had that virtual research assistant, then what would they do is they'd go out and they'd click on usually the first link, and then they'd read whatever they could, and then they might summarize that for you. Now, the downside of that is that, sure, you got, you got something that's kind of maybe right, but you're also maybe only seeing one tiny slice of it, right? And 
you might be missing out, or you might even have the wrong Dr. Evian Gordon. Who knows? So what what I trained Quest to do, though, was to act in this similar kind of way. So we, we call this a neurosymbolic system. So it uses the power of uh, LLMs, right? These large language models, where it understands the language of a query. Or even just say, tell me all about this, or, you know, who was the this and that, or, you know, t- t- walk me through the IRS uh, implications of this and that, or, you know, help me find out some information. Um, and the first step is it will then go and pull in, and in this case, about 15 to 20 documents from the internet. And my background is in search. So, you know, it uses a bunch of relevance and, you know, we, we try to pick things that are from more reputable sources or, you know, have, have better leak juice. So, you know, you'll find the BBC and Wikipedia before you'll find 4chan, okay, or some random bulletin board. But hey, you know what? Sometimes the only answer is on those random bulletin boards. Um, and so it will pull in those 15 or 20 different links and then in parallel, the next step is it goes and does research. It reads those documents. I mean, that's the cool thing about these LLMs today is that they actually can read the documents. And what we do, though, is we just ask them to take notes, right? Just as you would do if you were had a, an internet research assistant or if you were a college student and you were writing an essay. You'd get your index cards, right, and you'd take notes. And you'd say, okay, so at this part of the document, it said this quote. And it just takes those quotes. And then the third piece is a writer. So there's actually an agent, right? An LLM instantiation that is a writer. And it's a, you know, you you give it certain prompts and you could say, hey, I want you to be a really great writer. Here's the question or topic I want you to write on. Here's all of my research notes. Now summarize that topic, but make sure to always put in bibliography and references and make sure that you're not messing with the quotes and then it'll go and it'll write it. And then there's a last part that then goes and does fact checking or does reference checking, excuse me, not fact checking, because this is the internet after all. Um, You know, we don't guarantee that these things are facts, but what we can do is at least verify that what is said in the document is coming from those documents And that the links that you see are actually the real links that you're looking for. And then we present that to you along with footnotes and a bibliography as well. Uh, And a lot of people have found it to be super helpful. It's almost like having that internet research assistant at your fingertips. And in general, a search will take, you know, anywhere from 15 to 15 seconds to about a minute and you get to uh, get the answer to your question um, about some things that otherwise you might be spending hours searching on the internet looking for or typing in just the right keyword search and then you know leading you down a rabbit hole. Questy will try to take just the best and the most relevant information and then give you the sources so that you could use that as a jumping point for your next step. Okay, so that's super helpful. So thank you for that extremely distilled, clear, stepwise methodology of the way Questy works. So before we go into the next question, I want to just emphasize from my point of view what what I think is really critical. So for those people who are not that interested in the details, I would urge you to see this is not just a research tool. It's anything. If you want to check this out, GPT-4, put in your question in GPT-4, put the same question into Questy.ai. So I do that every time. I do both. And you will see for yourselves, why am I so, um, why is this such a great exemplar for me personally is because it illustrated the one fact about the internet that we all worry about, quality of information, verifiability of information. And what I saw with respect to Questy, in addition to this really smart methodology of honing in on the key papers and on actually reading the documents and extracting the key elements was the supplying of the top references so you could trust but verify yourself. You could trust but verify. 
And and that is what was the, no small difference to me because it was the difference between the potential dark side of the internet being illuminated with some clear, transparent light that you could check and explore in, in, in different ways. So is that a fair summary of what I've just said about the difference between GPT-4 and Questy.ai? Well, gosh, I, first of all, I love GPT-4. I use it all the time. It's really great for certain kinds of uses, right? If I'm when I'm doing coding and I'm writing, you know, code examples and I need some code to bug or, you know, if I if I want to do brainstorming, right? It's fabulous. Like what's great about these LLMs is you need to understand that they're not these black boxes that are total knowledge devices, right? They're I think of them more like tacit knowledge systems, right? So an LLM today, a great analogy to it is it's sort of like your visual subsystem. Now, how do I know that you are sitting in front of a wall and not to the side of a wall? How do I know that that green screen is behind you and not in front of you or to the side of you? How do I know that there's actually a window and a painting? Uh, I, I just know it. Right? Like we just know these things. This is a tacit knowledge because we've looked at rooms all the time. And why is it that when I go in Zoom and somebody has a virtual background, I can kind of sort of tell, right? Because you look at their hair and, yeah. but making up the explanation for it, actually, it takes effort. For most of us, we just know. And I think that you need to think about these LLMs like ChatGPT in the same way. If it's been trained, on the information, it's actually remarkably good. And it can even do, you know, stepwise reasoning for many things. But the difference is that ChatGPT and all of these LLMs, right? Creativity is a feature. It's not a bug in the system. So by their nature, when you ask them to tell you about something that perhaps they haven't been trained on, they are going to confidently tell you a story. And, you know, that to me, this idea of, we call it hallucinations in the, in the field, right? Uh, and it's, you know, again, it's, it's, I think of it more like an optical illusion than a hallucination, right? And that our visual subsystems are amazing at doing a lot of things, but they can still be fooled. So just like Daniel Kahneman, right, talks about this idea of like system one and system two thinking, right? The you know, the very fast thinking where we can intuit things um, and then the slower thinking, which is much more deliberative and it it's rule based and it follows things. And, you know, I, I designed Questy so that it doesn't it can't be a good, great brainstorming tool for you. If you want a great brainstorming tool, don't use Questy for that. Questy will lead you to links that will tell you about how to do good brainstorming. It's going to write you a report on how to do great brainstorming. It's not going to brainstorm with you. ChatGPT will. But if you want to be able to get something that is substantiated and validated and shows you how it thinks and does it step by step with real information that you you don't have to say, trust me, you can actually trust but verify, as you so eloquently said. Um, that's really what it's meant to do. So it's, it's really more fit for purpose rather than of trying to be better than or, you know, it's just different than what um, what the amazing teams over at OpenAI have done around ChatGPT. Now, you've, you've shown this quality of verification, simplification, distillation. Um, how much further can you take the quality side of it? In other words, do you envisage a version of Quest D that could only, for example, provide replicated studies? And I'm using that as one example, right? To what level do you have an interest in or are you able to um, increase the, the, the accuracy and validation of this information that you're providing? It's a fantastic question. The, the short answer is I don't know. Uh, and anybody who purports to tell you that they know is either lying to you or trying to sell you something. Okay. So that that's, that's first things first, right? We are, let's be careful because we are nearly approaching the realm of epistemology, right? 
and or epistemology, excuse me, pardon my French, you know, this this study of truth. Um, and that that is a dangerous thicket that I I really want to be careful to avoid. Um, I mean, look, you know, what what I'm trying to do is give people um the kind of access to um the a, a, a consolidated view and a um a uh let's just say you know a, a multitude of sources and then let people de decide for themselves and they can see where the sources are from and they can decide whether or not they want to trust them 